Welcome to this Light Factory tutorial on patching. Patching is the process of teaching the desk a logical layout for your lights and what exactly those lights are. Open the patch window by clicking on the button along the bottom of the main window or by pressing F7 on your keyboard. The resulting patch window has three sections. At the bottom right is the fixture library, above this is DMX outputs and on the left is a table showing the actual patch data. I will start with a quick overview of what patching does and some terminology that will be used. Channels and fixtures are interchangeable terms and identify the control handles of lighting instruments. This is typically controlling a single lighting fixture but may control more than one if necessary. Outputs or dimmers are also interchangeable words, although we will try to stick to using the term outputs to avoid confusion with intensity control when working with advanced fixtures. An output is a DMX channel that the software can control. The industry protocol DMX512 allows for 512 outputs per universe and Light Factory at the time of this video supports up to 250 universes. We refer to outputs using a point notation of universe.output. So if you see 2.30 you can read this as universe2 output 30. Attributes are any fixture parameter that the software can change. This could be pan, tilt, a color wheel, an LED control, gobo, zoom, iris, or any other parameter a fixture might have. Patching serves two functions in the software. The first is more historic and allows us to reorder the outputs in a logical way. If I have 20 dimmers, then the lights that are plugged in may not be in the order that makes it easy to work with the show. The first five lights may be my front lights going left to right, but they may be plugged into dimmers 15 through 20 and in reverse order. Patching allows us to completely reorder this. It is a software equivalent of a patch board where lighting circuits be, can be plugged into the required dimmer. With this you can also patch multiple outputs or dimmers to a single control channel. For example if you're working in a venue with a large number of individually controlled house lights you may want to put all of them on a single channel and control them all at once. The second function of patching is teaching the console about multi-parameter fixtures. Working with traditional dimmers is a relatively simple concept. If channel 1 is patched to output 5, then turning on channel 1 will turn on output 5. But with multi-parameter fixtures it is more complex, as each fixture uses multiple outputs to control it. Let's use a simple color changing LED for example. A simple LED might have control over intensity, red, green and blue. So this light requires four DMX outputs to control it. We could control this with channels 1, 2, 3 and 4 patched to outputs 1, 2, 3 and 4, but what would be better is being able to think of this entire fixture as one control and that's exactly what patching does. Once a multi-parameter fixture is patched the software takes care of the translation between the function and the output. I can tell a fixture to go red and the software figures out what outputs it needs to turn on to make that happen. All multi-parameter fixtures, also called intelligent fixtures, have what is called a start address. The start address is typically a setting on the physical fixture that identifies where in the 512 outputs the fixture is configured. For example, if our 4 attribute LED we talked about previously was set with a start address of 50, then this means that the outputs control are 50, 51, 52 and 53. We say that a fixture has a footprint of 4. Before patching your intelligent fixtures into Light Factory, we recommend setting the start address of your fixtures so that you can immediately test if they are working correctly. The actual patch for the show is displayed in the table on the left of the patch window. There are a number of columns in this table, however the first two to three columns are the key information. For each fixture identified in the first column, the patch address is its corresponding output or start address in the case of multi-parameter fixtures. The fixture make and model column is the name of the fixture that is patched. By default a new show file will be patched one to one, so each fixture patched to its corresponding output. So channel one is patched to output one and channel two is patched to output two, with the fixture being a standard dimmer. In the system properties is an option to start a new show with nothing patched. This will result in the patch being blank when you create a new show. When nothing is patched you will have no control of any outputs until you patch something. 
For the purpose of this demonstration, we will clear out the one-to-one -one patch and work with a blank slate. The simplest way to patch a standard dimmer is to type the number into the patch address field. As soon as you press enter, the channels will become patched and start outputting levels. One tip for patching the next fixture to the next sequential output is to hold down the shift key while pressing the down arrow on your keyboard. Next, to patch a multi-attribute fixture, the first step is to select a fixture in the library. The easiest way to do this is to use the search box and type any part of the fixture name. The search does not need to contain the start of the name, just any part of it. For example, if we wanted to patch a very light 2600 profile, we can simply type 2600p and then select the fixture we want from the search box. Use the up and down arrows to move through the search results and then press enter to select the fixture. The search will begin as soon as three characters are entered into the search box. Alternatively, use the tree structure above the search box to manually find the fixture. This list is grouped by manufacturer. There are two special manufacturer groups, conventionals and generics. In the conventionals group, you will find the major fixture types that might be connected to a dimmer. The generic group contains common multi-attribute fixtures such as RGB color mixing. Once you have selected the fixture you want to patch, use the output panel above this to find the start address. You can patch multiple fixtures at the same time by setting the quantity field. Move the mouse over the start address in the output panel and while holding down the mouse button, drag it over the, to the fixture table to the fixture number that you want to patch into. When you release the mouse button, the fixtures will be added to the sequential channels. In this case we see we have patched four VL2600s with start address 50, 97, 144 and 191. And in the outputs panel we see the footprint of each fixture that was patched, including details about what each output is actually doing for the fixture. So in this case output 50 is the dimmer, output 52 is pan, output 54 is tilt. In this case these parameters are what's known as 16-bit parameters so they take up two outputs per parameter. Now that we've finished patching some lights we can have a look at the results. Click on the live display or press F2 on your keyboard. This will return us to our channel view and now we can see we have channels 1 through 8 which are the conventional dimmers that we patched and also 10 through 13 which are our moving lights. Now we can see exactly how patching these lights makes it much easier to work with them. Rather than having to remember where the magenta channel is, we can simply control a magenta slider and work with the fixture in a much more intuitive and real world environment. Returning to the patch window, we will now look at a few other ways we can manipulate the patch and a few features of the patching screen. To start with, the patch address can be edited at any time to change the output that a fixture uses. For example, if I want to change the start address for the first VL2600 to output 40, then I can simply type this into the grid and we see the fixture's footprint move in the output panel. While we will not go into all of the command line features in this video, we will cover the basics of how the command line can be used to patch a light as an alternative to the drag and drop approach shown earlier. The patch command line is indicated by the blue border and the word patch to the left of it. The command line will be put into patch mode whenever the patch window is active and focused. Before entering the patch command, we must select the fixture we want. Just as before, I will use the fixture search to find the fixture I want to patch. I'm going to patch some Showline SL300 effects fixtures, and I'm going to patch these into DMX Universe 2. Command line patching uses the syntax channels at outputs. So if I want to patch six of these fixtures into channels 21 through 26, I can enter 21 backslash 26, the backslash is an abbreviation of the word through, at 2.1. The 2.1 represents universe 2 output 1. As soon as I press enter, we see the fixtures populate in the grid. Note that I did not have to enter output addresses for each of the six fixtures. I simply needed to give it the first output. 
and the software worked out what start address was needed for each of the subsequent fixtures. Selecting Universe 2 in the outputs, we see the footprint of each patched fixture shown starting at output 1. The channel list on the left side of the at symbol can be any valid channel syntax, such as 1 plus 2 plus 3, or 1 through 10 minus 5. To unpatch a fixture, we use the syntax of channel list at and put no output list. For example, typing 6 at enter will unpatch fixture 6. Now we see the row in the grid has been emptied. This fixture is now unpatched and no longer available in the channel display. Now let's take a look at some of the other columns in the patch. So far we have only been interested in the fixture, patch address and fixture model fields. We will not cover all of the fields in this video, so please refer to the user guide for more details about the fields we do not cover. The PT adjustment field allows you to swap and flip the pan and tilt of a patched fixture. If the fixture does not have pan and tilt, this will be ignored. Click anywhere in this field to pop up a list of options. This can be useful if a fixture is hung a different way round than what was expected. Simply select the option you want and the field will populate. The profile field allows you to define a different curve that the intensity of the fixture will take as it is faded from off to full. The non-dim profile, for example, will make the fixture act like a switch, turning on and off at the 50% point. The position, purpose and colour fields can be very useful data to populate as these fields are shown in the channel grid and will also populate the quick selection tool. The position field is typically used to define where the fixture is in your lighting rig. The purpose should be used to say what the fixture is used for and the colour field can define what colour gel you may have placed in the fixture. If we switch back to the channel grid after entering data into these fields, we can see that the information entered is now shown with each fixture. Clicking on the select button at the top of the screen will pop up a tool that can be used to quickly select fixtures based on the information we entered into the patch. To finish this video, we'll just talk about some of the options along the top. The options menu has a number of tools to make patching easier, such as resetting or clearing the patch, swapping universes, or even exchanging the fixture type from one to another, which will go through and adjust all queues, groups, and palettes with the exchanged fixture. Other options in here include copying and moving fixtures, editing dimmer profiles, exporting and importing patch from CSV files or Lightwrite, printing your patch, and various display options. The RDM option will access any of the RDM features supported by your hardware. The edit menu allows you to either edit the fixture library or profiles, matrices and other related items. Soft keys are a convenient way to access special functions when using the command line. Mute output will actually stop the output from the software so that no DMX is generated. And visible columns allows you to turn off any of the columns inside the patch grid, just to make it uh, easier to see the information that you want. Thank you for watching this introductory video on patching in Light Factory.